Hi, my name is Carrie Walker, and I will be facilitating the Village's Health presentation on the fundamentals of nutrition. Please keep in mind that the content in this presentation is intended for educational purposes only and should never replace advice from your healthcare professional. There are many benefits of healthy eating. It assures the right balance of vitamins, minerals, and other nutrients. But how many of us are choosing our food based on, on the nutritional value? How often are we instead defaulting to what tastes good or what's on sale? If we eat right, it will actually improve our physical, mental, and emotional health. And it can contribute to lowering the risk of almost 70% of all chronic diseases. The nutrients that we'll be looking at today are proteins, carbohydrates, fats, minerals, vitamins, and water. We'll be unpacking each of these categories a little bit in depth as we go through the presentation. The first one we're going to take a look at is proteins. When we digest proteins, they are broken down into building blocks called amino acids. Amino acids are the essential component of building all of our tissue, whether it's new skin cells, new heart cells, new cells in our intestinal lining, the, um, the cells in our elastin and collagen in our skin, in the connective tissue between muscles and joints. All these tissues require the building blocks of amino acids. They can also, protein can also act, function as an energy source. It's responsible for regulating enzyme, enzymes and hormones. The common sources we think of in terms of protein are seafood, lean meats, poultry, eggs, even beans and some other um, soy products can make up protein sources. Milk is also, and dairy rounds out the table on terms of sources. Keep in mind though, if you look at these, many of the meat and dairy sources in our diets can actually come loaded with fat. So we wanna make sure that we're choosing the low fat options, whether it's eating uh, non-fat milk, uh, reduced fat yogurt, and choosing the lean ground turkey. Those are the better options so that we're not um, contributing to higher cholesterol levels. We actually need 56 grams of protein for men and 40 for women over the age of 19. Let's take a look at how easy it is to fulfill those requirements. One cup of milk, which is eight ounces, has eight grams of protein. If you add that to the fat, to three ounces of meat, maybe with, that you have with your lunch. Three ounces is about the size of your palm. And let's say you have some uh, beans with that. For our example, let's say that you go out for lunch at a Mexican restaurant and you have some chicken, chicken in your fajitas, and then you have a side of beans, which has 16 grams of protein. And then you have maybe a snack later, an eight ounce uh, container of yogurt, you have already reached your max as an adult male of 56 grams of protein. Looking at this slide, you could easily add, a, get the cup of milk with your breakfast over your cereal, your three ounces of meat at lunch. And again, with if it came with uh, beans, that's not still at lunch. And having a snack of yogurt will round out your your protein content with a, without even considering that you may have more protein for dinner. A typical American consumes more than enough protein than is needed in the, in the diet every day. Some of the different low fat options that I had alluded to are listed here. One way to add more fiber to your diet and also cut out some of the fat is incorporating um, beans for, for meat in some of your recipes, whether it's meatloaf or chili. You can add them as a, as a healthy filler to add fiber and reduce calories. Always make sure to uh, remove that yummy skin from chicken or turkey. 
Carbohydrates are the next nutrient that we're gonna take a look at. They're actually the body's main source of energy. When we consume carbohydrates, they're broken down into the building blocks of glucose molecules. Glucose is needed by muscles and the nervous system, i.e. the brain in our body. Carbohydrates are a source of fiber. Two main types that we typically hear about are simple carbohydrates and complex heart carbohydrates. All carbohydrates are not created equal. Simple carbohydrates break down more quickly in the body to be used as energy. That's why if we are having a low blood sugar crisis, often having one of these can um, help get us back to more of an equilibrium. Be forewarned though that they can tend to drop you back down much quicker too because they're di metabolized much faster. Healthy forms of simple carbohydrates include fruit and milk products. So it is possible to include simple carbohydrates in our diet, especially as a replacement for dessert in the form of fruit. Complex carbohydrates are important in our body because they take longer to break down into glucose for energy. They give us a greater feel feeling of fullness and we're not as in, uh, apt to reach for more calories because we're still hungry. Different types of carbo carbohydrates include starch and fiber. They also provide valuable vitamins, minerals, and fiber in the when eaten in the form of vegetables. Sources and carbohydrates, the common ones listed here, rice, grains, beans and peas, cereals, breads. Similar to the proteins, keep in mind that there are healthy versions of these as well as unhealthy. A lot of the pre-prepared rice dishes and pastas that we, bought, we can buy out or with, that we eat out in restaurants are lo often loaded in fat and sometimes even additional sugars. So make sure to consult um, nutrition labels on products that you're buying in the store to make sure that you're not adding hidden, for, um, hidden sources of fat and sugar into your diet. Fiber is a complex carbohydrate and is important for dietary health. Fiber can uh, decrease your cholesterol as well as maintain good digestive practices. Two different forms are soluble and insoluble. A great substitution um, to add more fiber to your diet is swapping out maybe eggs in the morning or um, some of the, the breakfast, dry breakfast cereals for oatmeal, oat bran to fill you up plus um, give you greater sources of fiber. Whole grains are a wonderful source of fiber. Whole grains have more nu nutrients than um, simple carbohydrates. The term whole grain comes from the fact that when the, when the grain is processed, all of the parts of it have been maintained, both the, all, the, the bran, the germ, and the endosperm. So these are some of the things that you, uh, the words that you want to look for in terms of your ingredients list. The f ingredients that are listed at the beginning of the list when you're looking at a label signify that they have the largest percentage in terms of that ingredients list. So you want to make sure when you're looking at carbohydrate products that any of these are near the top of the list versus at the end. That's uh, the next nutrient we're going to look at. They are in essential in our diet. They do provide energy. They can also aid the body in absorbing other minerals because they're part of different metabolic processes. They're also important for growth and development and different membranes. Typically, we see unsaturated, saturated, and trans fats. Only one of these is healthy. We want to make sure that we're consuming unsaturated fats. It could be either in the form of monounsaturated or polyunsaturated, but the goal is to focus on making sure when you're reading those labels on the different oils that you're buying, that you're looking for unsaturated fats. Unsaturated fats are liquid at room temperature. The reason they're, it's important to choose unsaturated fats is because they will help lower your LDL cholesterol. 
or your L for lousy cholesterol. Consumptions of high saturated, high saturated fats can drive up your LDL very quickly. Butter, cheese, whole milk, ice cream, cream, and fatty meats are very good sources of fat, saturated fats. So be on the lookout for those. When you add those foods to your diet, not only are you adding potentially sugar, but you're also increasing your um, cholesterol level. Trans fats are found in processed foods and they can also increase your cholesterol. When we think about eating our which foods we should select, we want to make sure that we are eating for health. We want to make sure that our food contains all the nutrients that our body needs. The goal is not to have to rely on supplements. Our body more readily absorbs vitamins and minerals and nutrients from whole food sources rather than supplements. I want to make a point here that Supplements, vitamins and supplements in general are not regulated by the FDA. Even though a label may say that a particular tablet has 500 milligrams of magnesium, we don't necessarily know if that's true. We would hope that it's a reliable source if it's a reliable brand, but we don't know how much of that tablet is a filler amount. There's different forms of vitamins and minerals and the types that are found in food are more readily ab absorbed by our body. The, th the 13 different vitamins are listed here. Each one has a different function as in, and is, um, plays an important role that, that others can't. So you want to make sure that you have a balanced diet and that your body obtains all of these different tools. If we looked at our body as a car, we would probably make better choices in terms of what we put into it. Because if, when we think about our car, we're careful about making sure that it stays hydrated with water. It has new oil to keep it lubricated. We use the correct petroleum or fuel. If we began to look at our bodies that way, we might be uh, tempted to make better choices. The sources of all those vitamins that you saw listed are these food listed are these foods you see here on the slide a quick glance confirms how important it is to have a wide variety of fruits and vegetables in our diet because if you don't have adequate fruits and vegetables in your diet particularly green leafy vegetables you are going to be shortchanging your body on the nutrition it needs to function correctly and over time if the body doesn't have what it needs, it be, will begin to break down, similar to our car analogy. Minerals are also important for many different jobs, including um, the building of our bones, manufacturing hormones, regulating your heartbeat. Calcium and magnesium are required in muscle contractions, and your heart is the largest So it's very important to make sure that you have adequate amounts of each. Magnesium is used in over 90% of your body's metabolic processes, so it's very easy to get deficient and not realize it. If you're taking certain med medications, they can also tend to deplete your body of certain minerals and vitamins, so make sure that you are offsetting that by eating a healthy diet. Again, if you look at the sources of where to get all these minerals, it becomes apparent how important it is to include a wide variety of fruits and vegetables in our diet. Again, confirming the importance of whole um, vegetables and fruit. Protein sources also contain valuable sources of these nutrients as well. Lastly, we're going to look at water. Water is essential for your health. It makes up 70% of your body. 
Each cell in our body has water. So if you don't consume enough water throughout your diet and through drinking water directly, your body will not function correctly. Not enough water can lead to higher blood pressures and it can tax your kidney, your kidney and liver function. Your body's not going to be able to filter itself out as well and it can compromise kidney function. Water also is in the cerebral spinal fluid in our nervous system around our spinal cord and brain, which is extremely important. Water is actually a valuable component in terms of breaking down carbohydrates. How much water do you need? Men overall need about 13 cups of fluid every day. Now that can come from different sources outside of water directly, but keep in mind uh, any caffeinated beverage such as tea or coffee or alcohol constitute a diuretic so that if you have one cup of coffee, you need to consume two cups of water to offset that. Women need a little bit less, coming in at about nine cups of fluid every day. How much you need depends on a variety of factors. Um, it also depends on how hot it is, how much you're sweating out water. You're going to require more water if you're sweating out on a sunny day on the golf course than if you're not. Respiration, breathing, consumes at least 20% of our body's daily intake of water. So there's a lot of uh, expenditure of water that you might not be aware of outside of urination. This is an interesting chart. When we're figuring out calories or caloric content for the day, fat has twice the amount of calories per gram than protein or carbohydrates. So we can consume twice as much protein and carbohydrates in terms of calories. It will help us feel full, more, um, more full without um, raising our calorie intake as much. If you have a question about content, take a look at the nutritional labels. Something may say advertise itself to be healthy and low fat, but you wanna take a look in, for hidden factors such as added sugar. Serving size is very important to consider. At first glance at a label, you may focus on, in this example, 230 calories. While that seems pretty low, but when you consider that there's actually eight servings in that container, if you, can, if you consume the entire container or can, you're actually consuming eight times 230 calories. The nutritional value listed on the right side is based on 100% of the daily requirement. So if you look at this label here, when it says uh, total fat, eight grams, that's 10% of your body's daily um, necessary value of fat per day. Making sure to read the um, ingredients list also. As I had remarked in an earlier slide, if an ingredient is listed further down in the list, that means it, it has a lower percentage. Also, the ingredients list is a, is a common place where you can locate unexpected forms of sugar. There's many different words for sugar, such as high fructose, fructose corn syrup, which could be hidden if you're not looking for it. So how do we fit all this together? How do we make sure that we're getting adequate amounts of all those nutrients? What does that actually look like? Well, the, um, the United States Department of Agriculture initially tried to help out with that by creating the food pyramid. But it's very difficult to figure out how to translate that pyramid onto your plate. So fortunately in 2011, they revised the pyramid to actually look at, look at as a plate. And a general rule of thumb is if half of your plate consists of leafy green fruit, uh, vegetables and fruits, you're going to be doing all right. A quarter of your plate should be that protein, which is the chicken, fish, lean meat, or eggs. 
and then a quarter should be grains. That can be your pasta, your potatoes, things like that. Keep in mind, however, that in addition to those percentages or those ratios on your plate, you want to make sure that you're choosing low fat, low sugar options because calories do matter as well. Calcium consumption is important and that's why there is a small uh, portion of dairy that is to be consumed every day. Some way of looking at your fruit here is to think of your fruit section as that would normally maybe be your dessert section. So if you um, had some fresh whole fruit, that's a better choice. Whole fruit is better as whole fresh fruit is always better than canned. Canned tends to add um, more sugar to it. Frozen fruit can also be an alternative or dried. Again, keep in mind, read the labels. Is there added sugar to preserve or to, um, to package them? Canned fruit is not always bad. There's um, multiple brands that have low sugar, but again, just make sure that you're making an informed choice. Oftentimes, um, having access to fresh fruits and vegetables is difficult if it's hard to get to the store or you're having a difficult time prepping food. So you just wanna make sure that you're choosing the most healthiest, clean option as you can when it comes to fruits and vegetables. Again, fruits are a wonderful source of um, vitamins and nutrients. They're low in fat and they provide a great alternative to dessert. Vegetables, again, fresh whole vegetables are always preferable, but if cooking or prepping on uh, going out to the store is, um, is difficult for you, frozen is a wonderful option. You can store it in the freezer and just take out as much as you want. Make sure that when you're using um, frozen that you're not choosing vegetables with a um, high fat sauce. Um, vegetables can also be canned, but typically canned um, vegetables have more salt to preserve them. So make sure that you're reading the labels and choosing low salt um, varieties as well. Usually most adults need two and a half to three cups of vegetables a day. And if you think about it, that is, you want if you laid out three plates in front of you, you wanted uh, three of those quarters on your plates to be vegetables. Greens, making up the other quarter of your plate, we're talking about your, um, your carbohydrates typically. It could be your wheat, your rice options, oatmeal in the morning, barley there's a lot of uh, new grains out there um, there's quinoa couscous so make sure that you look at the back and uh, the the um, the nutrition on those and start getting acquainted with different options there's some new tasty options you might not have thought of before i would encourage you to pick up some different magazines at the grocery store um, any of them containing um, clean eating options or diabetes for, li for living, regardless of your diabetic or not, will contain some low fat, low sugar options. I'm a very visual person and it's very helpful for me to look at recipes where I can see pictures to give me different ideas of how I can combine grains and vegetables into new, uh, new dishes. Protein, um, a quarter of your plate should be that protein. And if you hold up your hand, the size of the serving size of the protein should be about the palm of your hand. If you are not able to be, eat um, animal sources of protein, there are plant-based sources like soy, um, and you can also combine incomplete sources of protein such as um, rice and beans. Adults need three cups of dairy each day. Remember that you need to choose low fat options. Um, this does not give us the license, unfortunately, to eat three cups of cheese every day. Uh, why you may do that, that's going to greatly in, in, um, increase your calorie and fat consumption, causing you most likely to take in more calories than you're going to expend that day. Dairy is also associated with a reduced risk of cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and high blood pressure. It's a wonderful source of calcium and some potassium. What we want to avoid are processed foods. 
you know, walking down the grocery aisles, um, anything that's food that's been cooked, canned, frozen, packaged, or changed in nutritional composition with fortifying, preserving, or preparing in different ways. So this is going to be your packaged coffee cakes, your cookies, your um, pre-prepared foods, some frozen um, meals can be very um, processed as well. Again, read, if you have a question, pick up that label and compare. Compare some different brands and see, see which one's healthier. And when one uh, touts itself as maybe being a healthier choice, pick up that label and compare it to maybe um, one that doesn't. What's the difference? Begin to educate yourself. Processed foods sometimes can be positive because they can uh, po uh, process foods when it's changing the nutritional content can actually be because things have been added to it. Orange juice can have calcium added to it, for example, and juices can be uh, fortified with other uh, vitamins and minerals. But overall, your whole food sources that have all your fiber and the closer to the natural source that it is, the better. Pre-cut vegetables can be added for your convenience. If you have a difficulty prepping food or you really um, are tired of it and no longer are interested, um, a, a clever way to work fruits and vegetables in can be through frozen vegetables or even pre-cut ones in your, um, in your produce section of the, of the store. With processed foods, you're always running a risk of higher sugar, sodiums, and fat than you would if you were preparing your food from scratch at home. So in summary, it's important to consider when you're choosing your food, you want to make sure that you're eating for health and nutritional content, not just taste and calorie content or price, I should say too. Your nutrition, you need to make sure that you're getting your at least 46 to 56 um, grams of protein per day, adequate carbohydrates to break down into um, glucose for your muscle and your nerve function. You do want adequate fats, a small amount from healthy sources for um, good met metabolic balance. Vitamins and minerals are necessary for most of our metabolic processes. So we need to have, um, make sure that we get those building blocks through our food so our body functions correctly. Uh, water is essential. Dehydration can cause a host of health problems if we're not careful. Unfortunately, as we age, the mechanism that tells us that we're thirsty and that we need to consume water is compromised. And if we're not recognizing that we're, we need water because we're, we often run the risk of becoming dehydrated. So if you find yourself falling in that category or maybe that you don't like the taste of water, Make sure that you figure out ahead of time how much you need to consume during that day and maybe bottle up that amount of water or have, um, you can use some, some fruit juices, put some flash, uh, splashes of fruit juices and maybe in your water, use crystal light, something to flavor it. And then if you have those three cold bottles of liquid in your refrigerator, you know that when you consume them, you've consumed the, the necessary amount of water for that day. Um, make sure that you are reading your nutritional labels. All foods are not con are created equal, especially when you're buying um, processed things. Fat and sugar can creep in, adding higher calories than you initially thought. When you go to the grocery store, think about meal planning rather than just grabbing things that look good. If you actually entered the store with a meal plan, I want to have fish twice a week. So that means I've got to buy a couple servings of fish. Okay, that takes care of my protein for dinner for two of the days. What other sources of protein am I going to need during the week for dinner? Would it be chicken? Would it be steak? And actually make a list ahead of time and stick to your list. You'll be less likely to overbuy and more likely to stick to a nutritional plan. When in doubt at the grocery store, try to uh, remember that plate in mind. We want half of our plates to be fruits and vegetables. One quarter should be protein and one quarter should be um, grains. 
So if you keep that in mind and don't go to the shop, uh, go to the store with a list, at least keep that as a guide when you're selecting your options. I hope you found this helpful. And again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to the Villages Health Learning Center. Thank you for your time.